recording has started. Okay, so Canvas Fundamentals Part 1, and I'm actually going to mute um, the college. It's not the college. Let me see. I've muted you. The college, I was getting some feedback from you, so apologies, I've muted you. You can unmute yourself um, in blue jeans, but I've muted you just because I was hearing some feedback there, so apologies for that college. All right, so Canvas Fundamentals Part 1 is Part 1 of two parts. We've got 90 minutes together now, and we'll have 90 minutes again next Friday. And Canvas Fundamentals Part 2, the purpose of this training is more like the teacher or instructor or the, the people who are going to use Canvas for learning purposes rather than administrative purposes. Um, and we're going to start today with the foundational stuff. This is more of a basic overview of things like how to navigate around Canvas, the settings for users in Canvas. We're going to talk about something called the Canvas Inbox, or it's also called Conversations. So the Inbox functionality of Canvas. Um, and we're going to look at the, the things like our calendar. And we're going to start look at or start looking at organizing course content uh, and we're, we'll start building course content at a very basic level. Um, and we'll look at a couple of things in the, if we have time for covering the homepage, hopefully we will, and course settings. Now, why am I telling you this? Because the things that you may be super excited about, we may be doing next week. <laughs> so when we're talking about things like assignments and quizzes and grading, that is what we're going to cover next week. That what we're covering this week will prepare you. Now, can I check, um, and Neil, can I check with you, does everyone who's attending this class have a sandbox course created for them so that they can be um, either playing along with me today or practicing between now and next week? Uh, I would say like more than half the people do. There were some last minute attendees uh, okay. that I think haven't even logged into Canvas yet. Okay, all right. So no problem, just make sure you reach out to your CSM or your IC, your implementation consultant or your customer success manager if you wanna have those people added, have, have us add those sandboxes for you. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering what I'm saying, um, one of the things that you will have available for you is what we're calling a sandbox course and in the industry that you're in you I don't know whether you call it a sand pit or something like that a course uh, there's going to be a course for you just for you in your canvas where you can play where you can experiment and where you can try things those of you who already have a canvas login I want you to feel free if you want to log into canvas I can see you're all on laptops those of you who have a Canvas login, feel free to log into Canvas and be clicking on things in your, if you've got a sandbox course. So courses look like these course tiles here. If you've got a sandbox course or a play course, feel free to be playing in that while we're going through the content today as well as next week. Okay, so for those of you who have not ever logged into Canvas, you're seeing Canvas for the first time. I want to share with you though, we are looking at my Canvas. We're on my browser instance and we're not on your browser instance. So this is, we're not looking at your college or senior high school Canvas. We're looking at mine, but the things that we're going to cover are the same no matter um, which Canvas you're logging into. So we're pretending that I'm a school uh, and this is my Canvas. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through, firstly, this first screen. So, by the way, can I just double check with you when I use this little spotlight, can you see that on your screens? Thumbs up if yes. you can. Yeah, or thank you, Neil. So, we're on a screen called the dashboard. So, I've logged into the Canvas for school called D. Thompson. <laughs> um, and you'll have your own URL for your school. Uh, and we're on the dashboard screen, which is the first screen that any user sees when they log into Canvas. And so, there's some important things to know about this screen. One of the main things we're going to do today is go through this, this what we call the global navigation menu on the left-hand side. 
Okay. And we are in the, you can see that you can always come back to this dashboard screen with this navigator here on the left hand side. A couple uh, of things I want. Debbie, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, can I just get a quick show of hands and who hasn't, who doesn't have an account yet from the trainings? Like, like just one, two, three. Oh, there's quite a lot. So there's quite like uh, six people with, yeah, six people without accounts. Uh, Claire, okay. can you just send me the emails or maybe you can create the their logins yourself for those without accounts? Okay. We'll try to get that done within the day. Yes, sir. Well, that's Got it. Okay, I know, uh, and some of you are going to be really excited at the end of today and want to play in Canvas, so that's a good thing <laughs> to have your, your own sandbox course to play in. So in this dashboard, the first thing to point out here is these four things that we're looking at, these four squares or tiles. Each of these is a Canvas course, okay? and, um, and there it, it's easy to click into them. So you may notice a couple things. And by the way, I know you're looking at things on a big screen, but I can, if you need me to, I can easily zoom into my screen to show you things a bit closer. So you'll see here on this screen, for each of these courses, um, I've got an image on, well, this one's actually a GIF, so you can use GIFs here on this course. Um, and then I've got one that just doesn't have an image on it. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. You'll notice some names here. So these are course names and course codes. Um, and you'll notice this dot here. Now, some of you who are in Canvas and have a course now, you won't have this dot, but you'll have these three dots. Yours may look a bit different, and I'm just gonna change my dashboard a little bit to look at what yours might look more like this, okay? Why we've got some color coding across our courses. Why we have color coding across our courses is gonna make more sense when we look at the calendar. So I'm showing you this because I want you to understand as teachers and instructors or learning technologists or faculty or whatever your role is, um, if you are a teacher or a course designer in, in a Canvas course, you have some control here. You control um, the image that goes on here. So you can, and I know you're a school who will be very interested in images and aesthetics as well, will you not? Uh, based on the kind of things that you do. Um, and your students, though, can each, and each individual user can control the color coding here. So these three dots here are actually related to two things. Number one is, uh, this is a nickname for my course, which I can change. So I can call this my biology course, and I can change the color code associated with it. So I'll just change it to this green to make some changes here. Each user can do that. And, and again, when we look at the calendar, it'll make more sense why I'm showing that to you now. There's something else I want to show you on this dashboard screen, and it's over here on the right-hand side. So we've got this to-do list, and we've got something called coming up, and we've got something called feedback here. So whether you're a teacher or a student in a course, you also will have this on your dashboard. The to-do list, what this does is it pulls, pulls in from Canvas courses, all the Canvas courses that you're enrolled in, whether you're enrolled as a teacher or enrolled as a student, this is gonna pull in things that you should be doing, like um, I'm, I'm currently uh, a teacher. I'm, as a teacher here, I've got things that I should grade because there's submissions. I've got three submissions for this assignment that I need to grade. I've got one submission for this assignment to grade. I've got one submission for this assignment to grade. Students are gonna see their assignments that are about to be due. This coming up section is a short list of what's coming up in the next seven days in the Canvas calendar, which we're going to look at. And recent feedback has to do with when you're grading assignments for your students. There's feedback that you can add for your students, and your students will be able to see their most recent feedback. So all of that on a dashboard screen, the very first screen we see when we log into Canvas. What I wanna show you next is this courses, this little courses um, area in the global navigation bar. And you'll notice here, while I've got four courses on my dashboard screen, I'm gonna cl click on courses. When I choose this, I actually have more than four courses that I'm enrolled in. So you can see I've got 
uh, probably about 15 courses in here. And the way I get them to show up on my dashboard screen or remove them from my dashboard screen is with this star is like a favoriting thing. So I could have courses appear or not appear on my dashboard screen based on whether I favorite them or not. Yeah. I also want to point out this here. So I'm going to go into this enrolled as, uh, and I want you to notice that while in most courses I'm a teacher, there's actually a course where I may, I'm a student. So what Canvas does, Canvas lets, um, Canvas lets you be enrolled in a course with different types of roles. Why might teachers be a student in a course? Well, um, the college or the senior high school might choose to have um, internal professional development courses placed in Canvas, and you, and as faculty, may be a student in one of those courses. So you may find yourself a teacher in some courses and a student in others. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that uh, also happens to us. Yes, okay, Like uh, for some teachers uh, choose to enroll in short courses that we also hold. Yes, exactly. So you can have all of it, that in one place with Canvas where the courses that you teach and the courses that you attend can all be in the one portal. Any questions so far? I'm about to look at the account next. Any questions so far on that? No. Okay. And I did mute, let me see, I did mute the college. I can't see you, the college, right now. Um, I can, I'm only seeing one person at a time. I can see the senior high school now. But the college, I can't see. I'm going to unmute you for a second. College, are we all good? College? Thumbs up. Thank you. I've muted you again. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go into this account. Here. And this account is a Canvas account. So you can see here um, that I've clicked on that and I've got a little sub menu that opens up. Now I've also got a profile photo um, and here is a name. Now just because I'm a teacher, just because you're a teacher, let's say, doesn't mean you're going to have the word teacher here. I just want to let you know I've entered in this account my name as Debbie Thompson Teacher because I also have a separate account as a student. So that is just for me to keep it straight. You will see your name here, okay? And your students as well have an account. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a couple of the key settings in accounts that I think you should know right at the start of your Canvas experience, and perhaps your students should know as well. So I'm gonna click on settings. Those of you who, who like to play along um, and have a Canvas, your Canvas open, feel free to be in your account and be looking at your settings at the same time as I'm showing you this. So here we are in my, my settings screen. And as I said, there's a couple of things I wanna point out to you. So we have things in here that you would expect in settings like name, um, language, time zone. Okay, some of these things are editable. I have an edit settings button here on which you can see in my canvas, I can actually change my language and my time zone. In this case, I can change my password as well from here. So that's a little bit of a standard thing that you would see in settings. One of the things I would definitely like to point out to you is this ways to contact, which is on the right hand side, because this is often misunderstood as being, this is how I'm going to tell my students to contact me. That is not what Ways to Contact is for in settings. Ways to Contact, this is connected to um, Canvas's ability to notify you of things. And we're going to look at notification settings in a moment. What this does is there's different um, trigger notification triggers. And this Ways to Contact is what are the different ways that Canvas can notify me, Canvas the system. Okay, so this is not where your students find your email address or your phone number. By default, you'll have a way, an email address in here already, because when your account, those of you who have Canvas accounts, um, when your Canvas account was created, 
an email address will have been part of that account creation. And so it's going to be your school email address, I'm assuming. You're more than welcome to add additional email addresses. Now I'm going to need to zoom out a little bit for this. I'm going to click email address here. So you can add additional email address. Uh, why? Because you'll notice when we talk about notifications in a second, uh, there are different things that happen in Canvas that you may want to be notified via email about, and perhaps you'd like to be notified to an email address other than your school email. Okay. You also have the ability here to put in a, a mobile number, so a cell phone number, and you would be able to put in your phone number and get SMS notifications, so text message notifications. Your students can do this as well. So another way to be notified, so we've got emails and mobile numbers so far. You can also be notified by Twitter. For those of you who use Twitter, <laughs> Canvas can direct message you in Twitter and private message you in Twitter. And Canvas also can push to devices. So Canvas, there are Canvas apps. There's a teacher app, there's a student app, and there's what we call a parent or observer app. And Canvas can also note, send push notifications to the app. The ways to contact is in relation to the notifications we're about to look at. Before we look at the notifications, the reason I can have my Twitter, uh, my Twitter as um, contactable by Canvas is because I've connected my Twitter account to Canvas. So I've chosen to connect Twitter to Canvas. I could also connect my Google Drive, Skype, or LinkedIn to Canvas. Google Drive, this is, these are not for, these are not for notification purposes. This is just so that you can access your Google Drive from Canvas. Skype, allow, Skype and LinkedIn allow you to put your Skype address and your LinkedIn address um, up for students in your profile. So this ways to contact is gonna make a little, little bit more sense when we look now at this notifications option. So I've just clicked on notifications. Those of you who are using your own laptops and wanting to do that, this is where I've clicked notifications. And here's where we see the three, uh, the three options I had. So this is my email address from Ways to Contact. This is my Twitter handle from Ways to Contact. And there's my push notifications. So this notifications allows me to take different tr triggers in Canvas and dictate whether I'd like to be notified outside of Canvas about these things. For example, let's look at the, the first one, which is due date. Now you may have noticed when I hovered my mouse over due date, I got a little bit more information. So the trigger for this notification is an assignment due date change. So it, it, an assignment exists and the due date on that has changed. So I can choose whether I'd like to be notified about this via email, via Twitter, or via push notification. And I have, I can choose between four timing options. I'd like to be notified right away. I'd like to be notified by a daily summary. I'd like to be notified by a weekly summary, or do not notify me about this at all. So you can see for a due date change, I have said Canvas do not email me. I don't need to know by email about this due date change and I don't need to know by Twitter, and I don't need to know. So Canvas, do not notify me at all when a due date changes in the course. But I do have some other things that I have different types of notifications here for. So for example, I've got something called announcements, and I would like to be notified in a daily summary. So does that, does that make sense to you, that these, there are trigger events in Canvas, and you can choose if you would like to be notified about these things happening via email or via push notification, for example. It's very much like any other app, yeah? For, for push notification, can I clarify, uh, this relates purely to the mobile app of Canvas? So this is, uh, this works both for our iOS and our Android apps. So for the teacher app and the student app, both, mm, yes, okay. you can, the notifications are applicable there. Okay, got it. 
Excellent. Now, one of the things I'm going to mention, because the next thing we're going to talk about is the Canvas inbox. So I want to show you one of the other uh, options here. So the Canvas inbox is actually called conversations. So uh, hovering over here, new inbox messages. Um, so the inbox functionality in Canvas, uh, it's, that's probably something you do want to be notified about outside of Canvas. So for example, for that, I've asked Canvas to notify me straight away if anyone inboxes me. Now there are default settings for these. Um, and you, each individual user can choose their own settings. This means your students could come in and go, nope, 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 don't notify me, don't notify me, don't notify me. Your students can do that because they control their account, okay? So please be aware of that. It doesn't mean they can't do these things in Canvas. It just means they're not gonna get notifications outside of Canvas. Any questions on that before I move to the Canvas inbox? I'm going to unmute the college. Are we good, college? Yes, we are. Thumbs up, thank you. Okay, and everyone uh, else. Just maybe is, I can yep. add like uh, one trick that. Uh, that was shown in the previous screen is you can add a plus to your email. So it can be like Neil plus canvas at you could uh, CIIT. Do that. Yes. So it's easier for you to filter out all the messages that coming that are coming from Canvas. Yeah, uh, you can. It's a Gmail yes. trick. Yes, it is. It's very handy. <laughs> all right, I'm going to look now at the Canvas inbox. So I'm just going to click here in the global navigation bar. And what we see is something very, very similar to an email system, but it's not an email system. It's inboxing within Canvas. So what we have, the best way for me to show this to you is to give you a couple of examples. So there's a filter here where I could choose my courses and I, I could be filtering out um, emails. So these are the, only the emails in my inbox related to my biology course. Um, I can filter out course by course. I also, this is where I would show my inbox versus my sent item box, etc. But what I want to do is I want to send an email. So I'm just going to compose, it's not an email, pardon me. I'm going to send a Canvas inbox message. So I'm going to compose a message and I'm going to use um, my training sandbox course. I have two students in this course, so I want to show you something. So here is where if we were sending an email, we'd put an email address, but we're not. So we're sending this to a Canvas user. I have a user called Little Miss Student. <laughs> so I could be typing little and Canvas is going to find me this student. However, this function here, I don't know if you can see this, this address book is very, very handy. I'm going to click on this address book and you'll see that Canvas is offering me who would you like to send this inbox message to? To everybody who's enrolled in this course, no matter what their role is, to the teachers in this course, to the students in this course, to the observer, observers in this course. Um, uh, there's, there's a concept of sections where you can have kind of administrative cohorts within in your course. Um, that's a little bit more advanced for today. But let's say I want to send a message to the students of my course. I'm just going to click students and I will see the list of my students. And I mentioned to you, I only have two students in my course. So I can send to individual students or I can say, can you please send this to all students in my course? So in other words, this is almost like a distribution list, what we would consider a distribution list in an email. And what it's doing is it's reading the enrollments in this course. So it's very handy. Um, so in the subject line, let's put, um, please remember to, um, to bring, bring your, um, I don't know, please remember, oh wait, please remember tomorrow is a holiday, <laughs> is a school holiday, let's do that. So maybe we want to say to our students, please remember tomorrow's a school holiday. 
There's a, there's a little function here I want to point out to you. Send individual message to each recipient. What this does is this is going to send this inbox message to all these students, but it's going to um, like blind CC. You'll see your own name as a recipient of this message if you're a student, and it, you won't see your fellow students' names. Okay. Um, and then here, this is the body of the message. Please remember no school tomorrow. Um, your teacher. Now, like any any like you would expect in a, an email system, we can attach a file here. But here's something that I, I really like. This button down here is to record an audio or a video media message. Now, this does use Flash. Do you allow Flash? Do you do you allow Flash on your computers? Do you use Flash? Are you do you allow Flash or do you block Flash? Ah uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. You use Flash? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if you if it so happens that you don't use Flash, I want to let you know that this functionality also works on the teacher app and the student app, and it doesn't use Flash. I know that some organizations block Flash, so that's why I'm asking. Um, and if, so, if you don't, if you if you find that you can't use Flash, you can do the same function on the app with the same result, and it won't use Flash. So I'm going to do this, and I want to show you this. This is kind of cool. So I'm going to I'm going to allow Flash here. And what this is doing is built into Canvas. I've got two, two cameras going at the moment. Um, so let me use my USB camera. Hello again. So I could be right here in a message saying, hello students, please remember that we don't have school tomorrow. Hello students, please remember. So I can save that and have a media comment in my message to my students. Now I'm, I'm spending a little time showing this to you now because this won't be the only place that you can easily record audio or video media in Canvas. There's multiple places where you'll be able to use this very same functionality. If you did not want to record media because you have a video pre-prepared elsewhere, you also can upload an audio or a video file. Now, I know that when, um, when, when we bring technology into school, I mean, this is, technology is something that is natural for you with your um, college, uh, that sometimes we want to make sure we, we still have things very personal. And this function to allow audio or video messaging allows you to still have a personal touch when you're having an electronic message to your students. So my students would get that message now, okay? Um, and my students would each have an entry in their inbox now. So they would see an entry in their inbox. They would see visually like a number one here. Now, based on their account notifications, we just talked about account notifications. If my students, depending on, I mean, by default, this new inbox message will immediately send them an email. Uh, they may have changed that to a daily summary or a weekly summary or not at all. Uh, but most of your students are now going to be notified via email that they have a message in their Canvas inbox. And in fact, they can read that Canvas message from their email. And in fact, they can reply to it from their email and it will come back into Canvas. In this, pardon me, I just went to the calendar instead of the inbox. So in this inbox as well, you have search functionality here, so you can search for messages that you've written for as well. Any questions on, I mean, that's a very quick preview of the inbox in Canvas. Any questions on that? I'm going to college unmute you again. Any questions on that at all? 
All good? All good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move on to the Canvas calendar. And what we're going to do is we're going to start seeing why there is color coding in Canvas. I need to turn on some of my courses. Color coding. I want you to pay attention to, on this right-hand side here, this list of calendars. What we see here, every Canvas user is going to have a personal calendar. I'm going to turn mine on. Um, and every, and then every student is, and teacher are going to see the list of the courses they're enrolled in. And each course has its own course calendar. The course calendar is automatically populated uh, based on the assignments and the quizzes that you have in your course. So when you create an assignment and put a due date on it, it's automatically going to appear in this calendar for your students. Okay? So your students never can say, I didn't know that that assignment was due, because they can always look <laughs> very quickly in their calendar. Um, and you'll notice that some of these are grayed out. Do you notice that? And that is because I'm filtered, I've filtered them off in my view of my calendar. So I'm going to turn my biology course black on and my physical sciences course back on. It hasn't made a difference because I don't have many assignments. I'm going to move back a month to July. And here we can see, do you see the different color coding here? So this different color coding relates to our courses. What we're trying to do is get students to vis visually be able to see in one place all assignments and quizzes for all of the courses that are enrolled in in one place. Can I get a thumbs up if that's making sense? Thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So the other, what, what I want to start pointing out here in this calendar is we're trying to make things easy to visually look at and get a sense of here. So we've got some icons here. So we've got an event, what's called an event in our calendar. These things are going to make a bit more sense. Here, here this is an assignment. This is a discussion, and this is a quiz. So our students can, and, and we ourselves as teachers, can very quickly have a look at what is due and what is happening for our course, all of our courses that we're enrolled in um, across. You can have a monthly view, you can change to a weekly view, and you can change to an agenda view if that's what you prefer. Okay. So. Uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to create what's called an event. So an event in Canvas is not an assignment, not, not a quiz, not a discussion. It's just something you want to capture that's happening on a particular day. So for example, um, perhaps you have um, someone from the industry that your students would like to get in coming to speak to your students and you'd like to capture that. So let's say that's happening on the 22nd of August, um, creating something new on a date is as simple as I'm going to just click on, on this date. I'm just clicking on the 22nd and I can create industry guest speaker on this date. Let's say they're coming to see us between 10 and 11 a.m. in I'm going to say the library or the computer lab. Um, I can say anything like that. Or if this industry guest speaker, for example, is, is addressing us via virtual conference, I would be putting the virtual conference link here. And I'm going to click Submit. So what this has done is this has put this in. I'm going to click. I've clicked on it. I'm going to edit it. It's actually put it in my personal calendar. See this? That's calendar. So none of my students are ever going to see this. I need to put it in the appropriate course calendar. Now that it, and you notice the color coding's changed. Now that this is in the appropriate course, all of my students can see this event.
Um, Debbie, this might I'm be just off checking topic. in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, but um, can teachers add students to their own class or uh, the admin has to do it for them? Well, that's going to depend on your setup. So, mm, okay. who asked so it's that? possible. Was, Neil, was that you asking the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cam's off. I yeah. think. Yeah, that's okay. So, yes, teachers, the, the function exists for teachers to add students to their class. Absolutely. Are you going to connect to a student management system of some sort? Um, it's mixed because the college has a student management system, but the high school doesn't have one. So okay. for college, so it's the... easy to upload everything. For high okay. school, it might be uh, challenging at this time to like um, okay. add it from an admin perspective. So I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, that's okay. What I'm going to suggest, and so I'm going to say you can do it either way. And what I'm going to suggest is, would you remind me, please, Neil, who your customer success manager is? Who are you working with here? Um, one is Amelia and one is Daniel. So there's yeah. like two people, they alternate. Okay, perfect. Well, either of them, um, particularly Daniel, can probably help you uh, with that. You can connect to assist and you can let your teachers add students to classes as well. So okay, both are it. possible. Check with one or the other of them and to help, they'll help you come up with a strategy and an approach for that. Got it, thanks. No problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into this event that we've just created. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna go to this more options. Almost every time you see something that says more options, that's where the cool stuff is. <laughs> anything that says more options. And I want you to really pay attention to this screen right now. So because I'm showing you something right now, which is very, you're gonna see all across Canvas. So can you see this menu, this toolbar here? Does it remind you of anything? Where have you seen something like this before? Google Could Docs? It be in things, yeah, Google Docs, Microsoft Word. It is, it is a toolbar with that kind of um, editing formatting and some other cool stuff as well, which we're going to take a quick look at. And I want you to pay attention up here too on the right-hand side. So what we're looking at here is called the Rich Content Editor. We're going to create a little bit of more content in our event. The reason we're gonna do that is because what I'm gonna show you here in events is just as applicable to creating content or wiki pages. It's just as applicable to creating discussions or assignments or quizzes. So once you know and have the feeling for this, um, there's it's easy for you to create things in Canvas. So all I wanna do for our industry guest speaker is I'm gonna add, for example, an image. So I'm gonna hop up here here where it says images, and I can upload an image. I've actually got a GIF here that I think I might use. So I can upload an image or we can search Flickr. So we have access connection here to Flickr where you can search um, Creative Commons. I happen to have in my course already, so I could have uploaded from my computer, right? I could have chosen a file from my computer. I happen to have in my course already some images so I'm just going to pop this GIF in here because I think it's cute. <laughs> so I could put things like in here like a GIF. I could write with text. I mean, this is every single one of you is going to have used things like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, right? Our industry speaker is um, Mr. John. Smith from XYZ Company. And I can do things here like I would do in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, and I could link to URLs. Um, I could do uh, all sorts of things in here. Do you remember how in the, just a moment ago, in the, um, in the inbox message, I recorded a video for my students, I could do that here as well, okay? So I could actually be writing students, 
this is who our speaker is, make them welcome when they arrive, etc. So I'm really, I'm just putting some more information here for my students, and I'm going to click update this event. So when I go back into my calendar, I want you to notice when I click this now, my students have this information on the screen. I could also have put links to um, this website. I could have put links to PDF documents. Uh, I could have put all sorts of information in here um, for my students. Now, the reason I showed you that is because I want you to understand that this sort of this sort of uh, content is how we can. This sort of toolbox is how we're going to build uh, content that you want to use Canvas to build within Canvas. Now, how many of you are familiar with HTML? I'm going <laughs> to. Those of you who are, yes, okay, HTML. So you, if you, I can see everyone's pointing at you in the blue shirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you might think this is, this is not how I prefer to build content if I'm going to use the Canvas way of building content. For you, we've got this. There's an HTML editor. You can switch between an HTML editor and then the rich content editor for the rest of us who don't know HTML. So if you prefer to build content like this, you're more than welcome to. So just a quick summary here for the calendar. Uh, we can, our, our students and we ourselves will see all of the courses we're enrolled in and we can view what's happening and what's due in our course these will populate automatically from your course content. You don't need to come in here and put all your assignments into discussions here. They will populate automatically. And I also want to point out this calendar feed link that you and your students can have. Some of you will have a Google Calendar or an Outlook Calendar that you use as a master calendar. And you can, you can feed your Canvas calendar into an external calendar. Okay. So that can happen too. Any comments or thoughts on the calendar before I briefly talk about both Commons and our help screen? College, I'm unmuting you again. Yeah. Everybody's okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So remember, this is foundational stuff. Do I need to unmute you again, College? Was there going to be a comment? So, so this is foundational stuff. Um, I know for some of you, this is probably very basic. And for some of you, this is good learning. So I hope everybody's getting something out of this. I'm going to talk now about these two items here, commons and help. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about commons, but I want to tell you what it is. Commons is like a shared repository of course materials for you at your um, organization at your school. So for example, and particularly we're going to talk a bit more next week about things like quizzes and assignments and discussions. You may create a wonderful quiz in Canvas and you think, I'd like my colleagues to have access to this quiz because perhaps they'd like to use it in their course. Then you can take that quiz and share it to this commons area and your colleagues can put that quiz in their course. So you can collaborate um, you can you can create content that you share with your colleagues, okay? This, so you can put th things in the comments, like you can put a whole course in commons, or you can put a really cool quiz that you, your colleague in the same faculty would love to use in their course too. So sharing your content with other people is easy in Canvas. I want to talk about this help menu right now. Everybody has this help menu, you and your students alike. Now your help menu might look a little bit different from mine, and it is actually customizable. So Neil, that's something that Daniel will probably cover with you as well. Um, and you'll also learn about, about it. Uh, about the commons. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, um, 
there's six sections and two teachers covering the same subject, would it make sense to have like uh, two teachers on the same course or would it make sense, uh, would it be better that the teacher just share the course in commons and they have separate courses? Um, both strategies can work. So there's different ways, Neil, that you can do it. So if you, for example, have, um, let's say you have one teacher doing a, a course and they have two cohorts, so students that meet with them every Monday and the same course delivered to students that meet with them every Wednesday. Does that happen for you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So the one strategy is to create a single course and divide those students into what we call sections, which are like administrative uh, separations there. And we can create, use the same one course and then create different due dates per section, for example. So mm, okay. uh, that is possible. Um, it is possible to, to create one course. If there's two teachers teaching two separate cohorts, you may want to have two separate courses or you may want to have one course and have one section with one teacher and a bunch of students in it and another section. Again, there, there are a lot of different options. This one is probably like an Amelia or a Daniel conversation. So what you're suggesting is absolutely possible. What the right approach is for you and your, like you might have a different approach for the college as for the senior high school. Have a chat with Amelia and Daniel about that, but it's absolutely possible. Okay, got it. Excellent. So this help menu, there's a few things I wanna to talk to you about on it. And Neil, this is customizable, um, but there's a couple of things I really wanna point out. And the first one is this one, search the Canvas guides. I'm gonna click on that and you'll notice it's just opening up a website. This is a public website um, and it's our Canvas community. These, This is our knowledge base, it is a public you don't have to be a Canvas user to do this. I could go into Google and type Canvas guides and I would get to the exact same place. But there's a link for it in the help screen. Now these are our, our, um, our knowledge base. So here's the Canvas specific ones. I'm gonna click on that and we divide our knowledge base up uh, based on who the articles are written for. So we've got articles for instructors or teachers articles specific to students. So students can look at this, um, admin, admin, so that's you, Neil, um, and observers or parents, so you may, this is not necessarily something that you'll use, but you may. And what I wanna do is I wanna quickly show you things in this article. Actually, let me go back. We, there's a search functionality here, so you can search based on, on keywords. What I found useful when I was first learning Canvas was to actually look through the, the the categories of articles in here. And for each of these categories, like for introduction, which is good to read, um, there's a bunch of knowledge base articles related to that. So let's say I'm looking, creating a quiz. I can click on this quizzes and I've got all these different articles that can help me. And I wanna just, the reason I wanna show this to you and I'm spending some time on this with you is because I want you to see we try and create these articles as very step-by-step. Step. So this is the step-by-step step help in Canvas. So for example, first thing you're gonna do is add a question, then you're, you're gonna click this. So it's very useful. Um, you don't have to remember everything I'm saying now because what I'm talking to you about is covered in the Canvas guides here. And the reason again that I wanna point this out to you is because I suspect that for many of you, as you use Canvas at the start, like anything else new, it's gonna feel clunky at first and you're gonna go, how do I do that again? The answer is gonna be in the Canvas guides. So how do I create a multiple choice quiz question? The answer is in step-by-step step in the Canvas guides. So Canvas guides are gonna be very, I still use them, they're very useful. Um, and I could have searched that as well. How do I create a multiple choice question? There it is, whoops. These are the list of the answers that came up. So you can access that from the help menu, but 
please know that you don't have to. You can just Google Canvas Guides and you'll get to exactly the same place. Also within here is something called Report a Problem. This is our ticketing, our help desk ticketing system. Okay, so you could be, you students and teachers alike, if you're having an issue, can report them here in Canvas. We also have something called Ask the Community. I'm gonna click on that too, and you'll notice it comes up out again. This is just a public website. Um, our community is um, Canvas users around the world, and as well, um, Canvas employees working together to try and come up with answers for questions about Canvas, ways to use Canvas. This is really teachers helping teachers. And you can get a lot of ideas from there. If you think there's something Canvas should do that it doesn't, you have the power to submit a feature idea, okay? So you could be submitting an idea here in Canvas. Um, when we develop Canvas, um, a lot of it, a lot, well, it pretty much all comes from what our clients need. So we find out what you need when you submit a feature idea. So we've just gone through all of the, we've gone through the dashboard, we've gone through courses, then we went through account, then we went through the inbox, the calendar, commons, and help. Any questions on that before I actually jump into a course? Maybe I just want to add that if you uh, submit a ticket or submit a problem, the person mm -hmm. who will receive it is uh, the administrator first. I think uh, for high school that will be RC and for college that will be uh, Avon and it's their responsibility if they need to escalate it to Canvas itself or they can resolve the problem themselves. Absolutely. That's how I remember, yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, and so what that means is um, sometimes, and the reason for that is sometimes students will say, when's my due date for this? Or my keyboard's not working. You know, things that are for you, then you can handle, and things that are actually for Canvas, those, those people can escalate to us and we will get onto that. So, so the admin needs to be checking their account every day that you know they're receiving uh, support questions. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to jump into a course. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Neil, uh, is everybody who's attending today will they be creating content or just delivering content or both? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I think uh, everyone will be creating content. Almost okay. everyone. Okay, brilliant. And will everyone also be like delivering class, to teaching classes? Um, except for like a few people, admins here and there. Uh, yes. Okay. Senior high school. Did we lose a few people? <laughs> They're coming back. They got hungry. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is exciting. We're going to jump into a course for the first time. Okay. So I'm going to go into my course that's called Training Sandbox. It's empty. Here we go. It is empty. We are seeing a very empty course. So what I want to do is I'm going to quickly create some things. This is not necessarily going to make sense to you right away, but I promise it will make sense to you. So um, Neil, in terms of, can I just check, are you using modules in your courses? Do you know yet? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not an ACADS person myself. <laughs> okay. Maybe it would be Avon okay. who, would, who can answer or Hazel if he's there. Oh, well, I think Hazel left. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some modules. Bear with me. I'm going to create them and it's going to make more sense once I've created them. So I'm going to create a module called Introduction to uh, Game Design. I think that's one of the courses that you do. Isn't that right? Yes, that would be my yeah. class. 
that's your cloud. Oh, there you go. So I'm gonna call introduction to game design. And then I'm gonna say um, like design principles, let's say design principles. And then uh, character development. I'm making this up, <laughs> character development. So what we have really is kind of like three topics. Um, and within game design, this is a module, this is a module, this is a module. Within, this is kind of like a subject or a topic. I could easily also, depending on how you structure your courses, I could have a module called my week one module, my week two module, my week three module. And what you can, what we're going to do is within these modules we will add quizzes and assignments and discussions and your students can move sequentially through this content or you can allow your students to look at any content at any time again this is going to make sense shortly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend to add content here so do you notice this plus sign you're going to see this in a lot of places in canvas the plus always just means add so we're going to add some content to our module and I want you to look at this list. Can you see this list on the screens that you're looking at? Can you see this or is this too small, this writing? You can see it? Yes. Okay. So I can add an assignment, a quiz, a file, a page, which is like a wiki page or a content page, a discussion, what we call a text header, so it's like a subheading an external URL or an external tool, which is like um, an app or a third third party app or a, a learning an LTI learning tool integration. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. So what we could do, for example, is I'm going to add a page to my module. Um, introduction to your teacher. Then I'm going to add a quiz. Now I haven't built this out, I'm just showing you um, kind of how to create the skeleton for a course. Um, game Design Basics. Let's have a quiz called Game Design Basics. Let's have an assignment called Your First Gaming Assignment. Let's have a discussion. Gaming, career, or hobby. <laughs> How many people think it's a hobby, right? So what I'm doing without actually building in, like building in the assignment, building in the quiz, building it out, I'm starting to put some structure around this module. So you all already teach courses. You already have content that you teach what you would be doing is just capturing that content here in Canvas. Now may I ask, on what I, I can see the senior high school right now on my screen, may I see your hands up if you use things like PowerPoints or Google Docs within your, in your classroom or presentations, yes? So what I wanna do is I, I can see many hands up. I wanna, I wanna assure you that just because you're moving to Canvas, it doesn't mean you need to redo all that stuff. Okay, I want to click this plus again, and I'm going to click, I'm going to choose file. Um, so how many of you use PowerPoints? PowerPoint documents? Yeah, I'll use PowerPoint as an example if that's okay. So I'm going to add a file to my Canvas module here, and I'm going to choose this file. I need to find myself a PowerPoint. Here we go. So I'm going to choose a PowerPoint here and I'm going to add it to my course, my course module. See, here it is. And I want to show you, I'm going to click on this. This is, this is how we would get into this content. If you already have PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoints, Google documents, um, it is as easy as doing what I just did, clicking that plus, clicking file and adding it. And here's my PowerPoint, which I can, let me just maximize my screen, which I can move through in the traditional page by page way. But remember, of course, this is, you know, in, we're in online world, right? 
um, we also can scroll up. So those, particularly those students who, of yours who are on um, their phone or a tablet when they're studying, uh, perhaps, are gonna be more likely to scroll. So this has put the PowerPoint, no animations, okay? So it's not gonna bring any animations across, but it was as easy as clicking that to put that content in my course. So let me go back to my course. And I'm gonna add a PDF to show you the same thing. My internet may be a little bit slow today. Here we go. So now I'm gonna add a PDF. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually just add the agenda for today's course. Let's do that. Training agendas, here's the agenda for today. So here, here's my um, agenda, and I'm gonna click on this, and this is gonna open in line in my Canvas. So if you already have a lot of this content created, you haven't wasted it just because you're moving to Canvas, it's easy for you to put it in Canvas. Does that make sense? You don't have to recreate everything that you've got just because you're moving to Canvas. You can use all of your content. So once it's uploaded, it's uh, like Canvas is a copy of that already. So whenever we update it, we have to re-upload the content. If you're going to update it, then you would re-upload it, yes. Yeah. Is it a good practice to just like, uh, majority of our content in uh, CIIT is in uh, it's in Google Docs, Google Slides. Yeah. yeah. So it, it makes better sense to just keep it as a URL. Well, you, you can, you of, can like, keep it as a URL, um, or you can add it. Let me connect to, you could do things like this. So I'm gonna go into actually this page that I created called Introduction to My Teacher. So I've created a page here. I'm going to edit it. It's got nothing but a title in it, so I'm going to edit it. And I could do this. So I'm in. Notice this rich mm. content editor is exactly the same as when we were in the event. Okay. Um. Here's my. I've got Google Apps connected to my Canvas, so I could actually just go into my Google Drive. Here's my Google Drive. Let me find um, Google Slides example. I don't even know what this is, but that's Google Slides. I'm going to embed that. And I need to <laughs> I need to authorize it. So I can be embedding my Google Slides directly into my Canvas course like this. So you don't have to just put a link. The, the reason you would wanna do it and embed it in your course is because your students stay in Canvas and can see all of their content in one place. They don't have to be taken out to Google Apps or Google Docs. You can embed them in here. Make sense? Yeah, nice, nice. It's uh, exactly like uh, how we use Confluence, another tool we use. Right, perfect. So all of that content that you already have created, you can embed here in Canvas. One of the benefits of, another benefit of why you do that, I'm just gonna click Save and Publish. And we have a, a you know, the concept of publishing, you may have noticed. Here, I'm gonna go back to my homepage that some of our, um, some of our items here, when it gets back to my home page, bear with me just for a second. Um, do you notice how some of these are green and some are grayed out? That has to do with public publishing. So I'm gonna click this button to publish these. Publish is simply my, uh, visible to my students and I can toggle off to unpublish to make it not visible to my students. The, one of the other reasons why you would not just put a link to something outside of Canvas and send them out somewhere else is because within a module, you can sequence these items 
And at the bottom of every, do you notice the next down here? Okay, so I can click next to go to the next piece of content or learning activity that's in my module. And it's gonna take me to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. So that's, um, you know, having everything embedded in Canvas is helping you have your students flow through the content in the order and sequence that you want them to as well. The publishing is done manually, right? Is there? A, it's not like you can set a date for each one. Set a date for each one? Oh, like, you can. You know, okay. By next so week, it will. Yep. Yeah, so we can do that. So how, let's look at these. Let's look at this example first at a module level. Okay. So at a module level, I'm going to go to this little menu here. I actually can say lock this module until a particular date. Okay. So I don't want my students to see this module until a particular date. Um, the other thing I can do, and I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lock this module because this is module two. I'm happy for them to have module one straight away, but I don't want them to see module two until the 21st of August. And you can see this will unlock on the 21st of August. So that's at a module level. So uh, let me minimize this. So that's at this module level. I can lock at a module level. What I also can do is create some conditions within this module. And, and so I can say, in order to complete this module, there are some of this content is mandatory. So here I'm gonna click on this button again. And I'm going to edit. And do you see where it says requirements? So module requirements are essentially the, the what's mandatory in order for this module to be considered completed by the student. So I'm going to add a requirement. And what it's going to do, it's going to offer me a couple of things. I'm going to zoom in a little. So I can force students to move sequentially through the, I don't have to do, but I can force the students to move sequentially through the, the module, like we were doing before, I can force them to go in that sequence. And I can also say for each of these module items, I have the option to do things to say, to in order to complete this, this module, for this page, I need you to mark it as done. For, the, for this quiz, I need you to score at least, I mean, I, don't, I haven't created that quiz, so it doesn't have a points value yet. You need you to score at least, five out of 10, or I need you to at least submit to take the quiz. And, to, and for example, for this assignment, I need you to submit the assignment. Is this making sense? For this discussion, I need you to contribute to the discussion. Okay, when you say submit an assignment, because uh, like uh, some students submit it like as a Word file, some students submit it as a Google Doc file. Uh, yeah. Does that make a difference? I mean, because it also no, depends on the will, situation. We will definitely cover that next week in part two. Okay. So what I can do is create some rules here within my content. And, and you see, actually, I have an, I'm going to publish at a module level. So... <laughs> I want to show you something. Now, now remember, I've only put kind of like these, I've created the, the templates for a page, et cetera, and I've given them names, but I haven't actually gone and built a quiz. So I want to show you what I mean by, I'm going to go to this thing called student view. Can you see what I'm highlighting here, student view? This is a function in Canvas that lets teachers see things exactly as the student would. So I'm going to click student view. And what we're going to notice is Canvas is going to put a, a hot pink border around my screen. Here it is to let me know that I'm in the student view. And can you see here, because I created some rules saying my students need to go through things sequentially. Every, these are grayed out. My student can only do this thing first. And you see these, these are going to be ticked once the student has completed that. So you can control the flow of your students through modules. You don't have to, but you can control the flow of your students through modules. And your students will, will be able to um, 
see how far they've gone in a module as well. So introduction to your teacher. I've asked students to view this. I mean, I've pop something in there because I haven't general, you know, this is not going to work in my student. I'm in a student view, so I'm not going to be able to authorize to this. This is just a student view functionality, but I'm going to click next. Once I viewed this, this unlocks the next thing. I would need to take this quiz and get a particular score, for example, um, to move on. Does that make sense? Uh, do we need to do anything on the student side to enable the Google Doc view? Uh, was that the one that wasn't working? Um, definitely have a chat with Daniel about that one. Okay. So we'll be able to know once we click the student view if it's working or not. No, student view, student view is not going to work with Google Docs. That's, it's just because um, it's looking to authorize to Google and I'm using us the student view. Um, it, Daniel will be able to explain it to you better than I will, the Google Docs integration. Okay. So what we're doing in these modules is we are essentially creating topics or and however you divide your course up now into chunks of information or chunks of lessons is how you'll create, each of you will create your modules and then you'll put content, quizzes, assignments, etc. in here and we will cover what to do in those things in, con in discussions, assignments, quizzes when we do part two next week. Now there's a couple of other things that I want to show you. We have 15 minutes left together. I'm just going to double check with the college if we're all good. So let's see, college, are we all good? Are we still getting a thumbs up college or do you have any questions? Thank you. Okay. And I'm assuming I'm assuming high school because you're not muted that you'll be able to ask me questions if you need to. Or you can type in the chat box. I actually can't hear anything from the high school. I wonder if you can talk to me. If not, whoever's controlling um, the blue jeans login can type in the chat box. So we're getting, I hope you're starting to get a sense of what your courses might look like in Canvas. Now, one thing that I mentioned to you is um, when we were on the dashboard, do you remember that I had images or GIFs in my courses, in my course on the dashboard? Let's go back to the dashboard. Oops, I need to click it. And you see that for my other courses, I've put a, an image or a, a GIF in the background here, but I haven't in my training sandbox. It's just a solid color because I haven't put an image there. Now, most teachers want to know how to, how to do that. So we're going to go into the settings. You'll notice here in this menu for our course, you teachers will have settings in here. And the first thing that you're going to see is that you can choose an image for your course which can use Flickr, or you can browse from your computer. I'm just going to choose um, Sunshine. There's not a lot of photos of Sunshine here, but I'm just going to choose an image, which is now the image. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And you can see this is now the image on my dashboard. So you can select your course images. Students can't do that, only teachers can do that. Let's jump back into my training sandbox. There's another setting I want to show you. Neil, have you gone through with Daniel Let yet apps or LTIs, third-party integrations? I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> apps and or LTIs. You, that's okay. Have you done your administration training yet? Yes, we did. Okay. That was like uh, yeah, a month ago. With Jess? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to show you this now. Neil, the reason I'm mentioning this to you is because you can connect to third-party applications 
at a course level, but you could do that at the root account level as well. So, so all of these third-party apps are, can integrate with Canvas, and I don't know which apps each of you use in schools. Um, most schools use YouTube videos. So would, would your senior high school and your college, do you use YouTube videos? Do you ever show your students YouTube videos? Yes. yes, I'm not sure with high school so yet. You, yeah, so for example, if that's something that everyone uses, Neil, rather than asking teachers to each individually go into their courses and add this, you could add this at the root account level so that everyone has it automatically rather than each person having to do it course by course. Does that I'm make sense? I'm looking for it now, <laughs> where to enable Excellent. it. So in your, ad, oh. in your admin settings, if you're looking in your admin, section you can go into your app. Yeah, yeah, I found it. Okay. And there's nothing installed. Nothing installed. So you might want to add things like YouTube or Vimeo. Let me get rid of this. Um, there's a lot of free ones. I don't know if you use things like Quizlet or um, uh, other ones. I want to point out a website to you, all of you, not just Neil, but to all of you, eduappcenter.com. Uh, eduappcenter.com. For those of you who use other third-party integrations, like you use apps with your students, you can uh, integrate them with Canvas. And here you can see more information on all the apps that have a, an LTI standard applied to them. You can even search ones that are free. So for example, here's a lot of apps that are free that you can connect to Canvas. So uh, now, what I'll do uh, for the teachers is I'll install by default YouTube and Google. Does it Google Docs? Does it need to be installed? Yeah, Google YouTube, Drive. Google. You might want to do Vimeo. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll install it. Yeah, on an admin perfect. level. So if perfect. any teacher wants to have uh, anything added. By default, uh, just send me a message. So they yes. can do that through if, Canvas. If they could do that, that would be great. Because oh. once that you know, and you might be thinking, well, why does that matter to me? Because let's look at a page. I just created an introduction to your teacher where I didn't put any content, but I want you to see here. So here I'm going to see my Google Apps. Here I can see my, I've got Microsoft Office 365, and then this is a drop-down arrow for other third-party integrations. Okay, so let me actually, I'm going to delete this um, Google Doc. And I could click YouTube here. So those of you who use YouTube, Definitely, if you use YouTube, you should be looking at the screen right now because this is going to be really useful to you. So I've clicked on YouTube, and I'm going to type, I like typing funny cats. I could be searching for the YouTube videos that I show my students, and I can embed them directly into Canvas. So I've just embedded this into a Canvas page. Let me save that. Why do I want to embed it? Because it means the students are not taken out to YouTube to watch this, and this strips away any ads. So now your students can watch their YouTube videos in Canvas and not be distracted by being taken out to YouTube. So the reason I can do that is because of those third-party integrations or those apps. So those of you who have um, any apps or other pieces of software that you use with your students, maybe you need to talk to Neil and see if you can get them added to your Canvas. All of you can look at what's available when you're in any course in your settings. You'll see an app here. Another thing that you have control over as a teacher, I want to point out where we're in our course settings again, is navigation. What that is, is you can control this menu bar for your students. 
So your students don't have to see everything in this menu bar. You may want to control what they can see. And in fact, Canvas is telling me what my students can see. The, other than settings, the ones that are black are the ones that my students will see. The ones that are grayed out are hidden from my students. So I am, I am limiting, I'm simplifying navigation for my students. If I don't use, um, if I don't use, if I don't want them to see directly all the pages in Canvas, I, I can hide that from them. I can hide this, this is just a list of all their assignments in Canvas. I can hide that from them, okay? Because why would you hide them that from them? Because perhaps you'd like to limit them to sequencing through the course via the course modules. This, I promise you, this will make more sense as you, you know, as you play in your Canvas sandbox courses. I'm well aware that hearing someone talking about something and doing it yourself are two very different things. The final thing I want to talk to you about is what's called the home page for your course. By default, and the home page for your course, when a student enters the course from the dashboard, so I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to click on a course, the first thing I see is the home page. Now, particularly those of you who are in senior high school might want to look at this here because by default, the course homepage is modules, but I want you to see some examples of other pages. Okay, so here's a course homepage. It just uses the content page or the wiki page in Canvas, and this is a course for biology. You see how that can be built? We've got some tables, some images. Images can be clickable links, by the way, in Canvas. So we've got some, this is an example of a home page. Uh, this is just to give you some ideas, okay? Here's another example. I, I, thank you so much for paying attention on a Friday afternoon, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so here's another example. This one's a bit more simple. So here's an example of a course homepage as well, where you may want to link, give your students links that are images to click on to go into course content. And then when I clicked on that, I've gone into a course page with information. And let's look at one more. Let's look at this one. So all of these were built in Canvas. All of these were built in Canvas. Now when I say built, I don't mean this image exists in Canvas. Let me edit this page. What I mean is this is actually just a simple table with images in here. And images can be clickable links to in Canvas. So we can make an image a hyperlink. And therefore, you, you can decide for your courses um, what you'd like your home page to look like, uh, depending on what you think is the best thing for your students to see, to see when they log into your course. So we've talked about a lot today, and it is the foundational and fundamental information that I wanted you to know before we start looking at quizzes and assignments and discussions next week. Um, Neil, from your, the chat box as well. So if you are for the Amazon, the content of, from Amazon Education, is that a, something that you subscribe to now? Uh, I'm not sure. I just got the request from someone in college to enable it. Uh, are we subscribed yeah. to it? Avon or Jarek? Uh, they're muted. They might, they might, I've got them muted. Let me unmute them, sorry. Let me unmute them. College, you're on, whoops. Um, you've muted yourself, College. I can't unmute you because you've muted yourself. Okay, uh, we'll figure out later. Okay, so I'm That's not sure okay. if we're subscribed. In the chat box. We'll figure it out later.
later, no problem. So just to let you know, a lot of these, um, you know, a good amount of these are free, but some of them are, they, you'll need a consumer key and a shared secret. And that if you already subscribe to these services, then you just have to ask Amazon Education for this information. And you might think, well, how do I ask them? Do you see this button? You can see information here. How to install it um, for support. You would go to this link, et cetera. Yeah. So if you already subscribe to it, you can get the configuration from them. I yeah, got it. I'm not, I'm not sure if we're subscribed. So if it's something okay. we pay, I haven't seen it in the budget, so. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. So we've, we've talked about a lot of things today, and I thank you so much on a Friday afternoon for paying attention uh, and having a lot of information given to you. We've looked at our Canvas dashboard. We've gone through a few of the details on the dashboard. We've looked at the courses list here. We've looked at the account, and everybody who's got a Canvas account um, will have things like notification settings, etc. We've looked at the inbox, the calendar, briefly talked about commons in the help screen. We jumped into a course. Let's jump back, back into our biology course. Um, and we started looking at the, the basics of modules. I'm gonna jump into the modules for this biology course as the last thing we talked to. I am curious. So for those of you who haven't, or are, I mean, all of you I think are early in your experience of Canvas, what is it that you've seen today that either most excites you or that you're keen to explore next? Or is there a favorite thing you've seen? Like, I'm so happy I can put my Google Slides right in Canvas, or I'm happy to use YouTube, or... Um, I'm excited yeah. about creating a home page. So, well, on my side, from an administrative point of view, it's like, uh, although it's kind of like a bit harder on the teacher side to create the content, uh, it's all easier on the administrator side because we get to roll over content uh, like across calendars or across years and just iterate yes. on it as opposed to... Uh, like in Google Classroom, which we're, which is the one we're using now, it's like each teacher has their own like style of using it. Right. Yeah. So this will allow your students a bit more of a uh, a, a consistent experience. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's always Wonderful. like improving, like uh, term after term, instead of having yeah. to restart. Yes, yes, of course. So those teachers, those those of you who are teachers who are thinking, wow, I'm going to have to redo this every year or every term. No, remember how I said, um, you know, when the Neil's already across this, but you can actually put a whole course into Commons and bring it back in for your next, the next time you deliver it, and it will be free of any student information. So yeah, we try and do our best to make things easier for teachers and students, and we try and make it engaging. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest those of you who have a sandbox course, have a, a play, have a play in your sandbox course in Canvas between now and next week, and hopefully all of you will have um, a sandbox course. So when I say that, what I mean is when you log into Canvas, that you will see on your dashboard a course that probably has your name and say something like sandbox course or practice course, play to your heart's content in there. That is the best way to learn about Canvas. I'm hoping that at the very least today that some of you are excited about this and are keen to learn. Uh, and I'm really excited to share more with you in a week's time. Thank you so much for yeah. coming today. And um, uh, I look forward to catching up with you again in a week. Thank you, Debbie. Everyone good?